and there is some uh, marks on the inside of my dash. Hello YouTube, this is Cruise Man, out for a Sunday ride on the 2018 Goldwing. But I thought I'd take a chance to check in with everybody and talk to you and talk about what we've been doing. Uh, some of you have probably seen the uh, video I did on cleaning the dash of the 2018-2019 Goldwing. And, um, I noticed the other day when I was, in fact it was yesterday, the sun hit my dash just right and I tried to make some video of it and there is some uh, marks on the inside of my dash. I don't know if it's from maybe some condensation got in there or I've never noticed it before. But I'm just wondering if there, the seal didn't get broken or something. I don't know how that could happen. I've never had that on any Goldwing. And I'll try to let you see it on this video if I can show it. And hoping that that is a warranty item. Because in certain light you can see it. And I've never noticed it until yesterday. And so somehow it appears that moisture got behind that clear dash and caused a little bit of fogging, I guess you would call it fogging. And it's almost impossible to see unless the sun just hits it the right way. But not good. And hopefully uh, the warranty will cover something like that if I can get the light just right to show them at the dealership what I'm talking about. I don't know why Honda used such a soft material for this uh, dash. And I wish somebody like F4 Customs would come out with a replacement dash using their coated uh, proprietary polycarbonate. I think that'd be really cool. In any case, I put these motor vlogs out every week or two weeks, depending on uh, the need. And uh, all of my YouTube channel is completely supported by those of you who have purchased my Goldwing maintenance videos and of course my sponsors. I have uh, maintenance videos for the 2018 Plus Goldwing and I have videos for the 2001 to 2017 GL1800 and F6B. So if you have any of those year models and you like to work on your own bike, check out my videos at my website cruisemansgarage.com. I also put out another YouTube video this week on some wiring uh, changes that I'm making on my 2018 Goldwing. And I've noticed a lot of accessories coming out for the Goldwing that have these harnesses that plug into the bike's harness under the seat. There's actually one on each side of the, of the bike. And one of those harnesses has, and I can't remember the order in which one has which, but one of them has like a tail light for the left and the right turn signal. One of them has the brake light. One of them has the running light. And so basically these harnesses plug in just in line, and it's really nice, even though it's still using the CAN bus to power the accessory. And so one of the things that I have a harness like that for is my show chrome isolator fuse block which basically is just using the CAN bus to trip relays and then all of the accessories get powered directly from the battery which is really nice it bypasses the CAN bus system so it's a much more reliable and I say a safe way to connect accessories to your bike now these harnesses there's one I had on my bike. I had one from Pathfinder LED. And I also had another one from Rivco for my trailer. The problem is there's simply not enough room under the seat of the Goldwing to add more than maybe two of these harnesses. And even then it's a really tight squeeze. 
you can in, you can add them in series. You can put the show chrome harness right in front of or behind the Pathfinder LED harness or the Rivco harness. But once you get a couple of these sub harnesses added to your system under the seat, there's no room to add any more. You run out of room. So if you want to add other accessories and they come with these uh, sub harnesses, you're kind of you're kind of screwed. So what I decided to do is to only have the show chrome isolator fuse block added to my wiring CAN bus system using their sub harness and then I wanted all other accessories wired directly into the isolator fuse block because it has terminals for the turn signals, the running lights, the brake lights, and everything like that. So that's what this video talks about. It shows you how I did it using these Wago connectors. Now, my next plan is, and honestly right now, it looks like a rat's nest underneath the seat of my bike because I've got all this excess wire under there and all these connectors. So my next objective is to really clean all that up. I'll give you an example. There's a big bundle of wires under my seat that basically goes to the uh, show chrome isolator fuse block because they give you a ton of wire because they don't know where you're going to mount that thing. Well, when you mount it under the seat, it doesn't really take that much wire. So I'm going to have to go in and do some splicing and some soldering and I want to clean all that up so that I have more room under my seat and I want it to look nice. I want it to be organized and neat and clean and proper. So that will be one of the next videos coming up. I'll show you how I go in and clean up all this excess wiring. So it's a beautiful morning, a little cloudy, but we had some rain yesterday. It's about 75 degrees. We've really had some great riding weather this year. I'm really shocked that it hadn't been hotter than it's been in June. It's June, you know, first part of June, and it's usually broiling hot by now. But we've had some really nice weather. Now, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and I'd appreciate it if you click that little subscribe button down below and if you click on the bell icon, YouTube will notify you when I come out with new motor vlogs and new videos and tips and tricks. That's about it for now. I'll be talking to you soon. I'm planning a road trip before too long, so I'll be talking to you from the road. Thanks again for joining me on Sunday on Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs.